Hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. Hello, my name is Crystal Valadon, and this is The Vortex Effect in Mini PCNL, Improved Understanding with the Phantom Model and Computational Fluid Dynamics. Since its inception, PCNL has undergone numerous improvements, including equipment miniaturization. Due to its size, Mini PCNL was born amid questions about difficulty in retrieving stones and potentially increasing operative time. In 2008, Nahla and co-workers first described the vacuum cleaner effect, also known as vortex effect, a hydrodynamic phenomenon capable of retrieving stone fragments without the aid of endoscopic graspers. Despite being utilized on a daily basis, its physical principles are still not well understood. The objective of this video is to describe the physical principles of the vortex effect, to thoroughly understand its applicability in mini PCNL. Our methods included a phantom model that we built made of plexiglass based on the measurements of a real mini PCNL set. To visualize the flow, the models were adapted to generate hydrogen gas bubbles. Three experiments lasting 30 seconds were recorded for posterior computational fluid dynamic analysis of pressure and speed profiles. We utilized the MIPM set from Carl Storrs, which contains both 15-16 French and 21-22 French access sheaths. Due to the small diameter of this set, a larger model was necessary. The measurements of the model were previously calculated to match a similar cross-sectional area ratio between the nephroscope and the access sheath. The nephroscope phantom was 10 millimeters in diameter and 24 centimeters long. The access sheaths had the same 17 centimeter length, but different size diameters. As we had different size access sheaths, a smaller and a larger model were both assembled. We used the same fixed intrusion distances in both models throughout every experiment. To generate hydrogen gas bubbles, the models were adapted to perform hydrolysis. Utilizing two 20-gauge wires, the anode and cathode were positioned inside the nephroscope. With the addition of a pump, we delivered 10% saline as the irrigant solution and hydrolysis was started with the power supply. A green laser was positioned parallel to the model, enabling flow visualization for the hydrogen gas bubbles. Here, we can see the actual model, which included the nephroscope, the access sheath, and the collecting system phantoms. After leaving the nephroscope, the flow split into two. One portion headed directly toward the annular area, which is the area between the nephroscope and the access sheath. A second portion of the flow attempted to move forward into the access sheath, but instead, a recirculating area was observed. Next, the flow totally reversed and exited through the annular area. We revealed that the flow downstream to the recirculation area acted like a motionless column of fluid, denoting the presence of a stagnation point. The intrusion portion comprised the distance from the nephroscope tip to the stagnation point, and it was measured every 40 frames to study pressure distribution, resulting in an average of 2.06 centimeters. The speed profile revealed that the fluid left the nephroscope at 38 centimeters per second, decelerated down to 0 to 2 centimeters per second at the stagnation point, and re-accelerated back to 40 centimeters per second when leaving the access sheath through the annular area. In addition, 36% directly left the system after splitting, with 63% of the volume headed to the intrusion point. At the nephroscope tip, the pressure was found to be 326 and 440 at the stagnation point, generating a pressure gradient of 114 newtons per meter squared. Finally, computational fluid dynamics also confirmed the intrusion portion to contain a field of random vortices. Regarding the larger model, we did utilize the same setup, however we observed a different flow pattern. After leaving the nephroscope, we noted little to no splitting of the flow and most of the fluid moved forward into the access sheath with no noticeable recirculation area. We also observed that the fluid was much slower as it moved through the annular area. The intrusion portion in this model was noted to be significantly larger and measured 3.85 centimeters. The speed profile revealed the fluid leaving the nephroscope at 37 centimeters per second, reaching the stagnation point at 0.63 centimeters per second. In contrast, the fluid speed at the annular area was approximately 10 centimeters per second, four times lower than the smaller model. Furthermore, little to no splitting was observed and 92% of the incoming volume headed toward the collecting system. Pressure studies revealed that the pressure at the nephroscope tip was 4.5 and increased to 24 at the stagnation point, 
generating a gradient of 19 newtons per meter squared. Studies of the flow pattern in the intrusion portion confirmed the absence of a recirculation area or a field of vortices, revealing a pattern of straight lines. To fully comprehend the vortex effect, we need to go back to 1738. Consider a horizontal flow inside a pipe with a constraint. To study the pressure between points A and B, Bernoulli stated the sum of the static pressure, the dynamic pressure, and the hydrostatic pressure remain constant. The static pressure expresses the intrinsic pressure of the fluid. The dynamic component contains the pressure exerted by the fluid speed, and the hydrostatic component comprises the pressure exerted by the fluid due to gravity. Next, we have the continuity equation. Assuming that the fluid is incompressible, like water, mass between both points is equal. Mass flow rate can be expressed as the product of the fluid density, the pipe cross-sectional area, and the fluid speed. Rearranging the terms, this means that the fluid speed increases as it passes to smaller cross-sectional areas. Getting back to Bernoulli's equation, height between two points is not significant, so the hydrostatic pressure terms cancel each other out. Once again, rearranging the equation and applying the continuity equation conclusion, we can say that the higher the speed, the lower the pressure at the determined point. This is the Bernoulli's principle, which states that any increase in fluid speed must be accompanied by a decrease in pressure. Applying the same concepts to our model, as the fluid decelerates toward the stagnation point, the pressure increases. Now, when re-accelerating back and regaining speed toward the annular area, the pressure decreases, generating a zone with a pressure gradient, which produces the necessary force to move the stone fragment toward the nephroscope tip. Therefore, pressure is regulated by fluid speed, and speed is regulated by the flow rate and the cross-sectional area. We calculated the ratio between the nephroscope and access sheath cross-sectional areas, and notably, the smaller model has a higher ratio which was demonstrated to provide higher speeds when in comparison to the larger model. Therefore, at the same flow rate, the ratio between the equipment's cross-sectional areas determines the speed of the fluid in the annular area. As speed regulates the pressure exerted by the fluid, we can explain the almost six times difference when comparing the pressure gradient between the two models. Therefore, considering the same flow rate, with higher cross-sectional area ratios, higher speeds are expected which will generate higher pressure gradients, thus increasing the efficiency of the vortex effect. In conclusion, this study revealed that the flow pattern inside many PCNL equipment generates a pressure gradient, which is responsible for the production of the vortex effect. At the same flow rate and with the same nephroscope, the use of smaller access sheaths increases the efficiency of the vortex effect. Thank you.